is the story told in the rhythm of the wondrously precise machines as they dance to the mastery of the workers' hands. Since the Industrial Revolution in the late 18th century, manufacturing has been a cornerstone for economies worldwide. The advent of electricity, mass production, and the assembly line brought about the second industrial revolution in the late 19th century, and the introduction of computers, electronics, and automation led to Industry 3.0 in the late 1960s. But today, Canada's manufacturing industry exists in an entirely new world. Industry 4.0, also known as Smart Manufacturing. This next phase in the industry's evolution leverages the internet, sensors, high-speed telecommunications, data, and AI to create advanced manufacturing systems that blur the boundary between the digital and physical. The most important tech advancement for Canada's manufacturing industry is the Internet of Things, or as it relates to manufacturing, the Industrial Internet of Things. The FutureEconomy.ca recently published an in-depth series on the future of the Canadian manufacturing industry in partnership with Remap. We spoke to industry experts who shared their insights about what Canada must do to embrace Industry 4.0. Irene Sterian, the founder, president, and CEO of Canada's manufacturing technology accelerator, the Remap Network, explains what the Internet of Things and other digital technologies mean for Canada. We try to integrate hardware, software, and AI into new products and processes. And that includes product design, so digital product design and digital products that involve both hardware, software, and AI in them, as well as digital manufacturing processes, uh, which really means connecting sensors and data between machines. Manufacturing is one of Canada's most important sectors. It employs 1.7 million people across the country, contributes approximately 10% to our total GDP, and produces exports to the tune of $354 billion each year. But the highly competitive and connected nature of the global economy, combined with the rapid pace of innovation, means that Canadian manufacturers need to make significant investments in technology to stay competitive. Andrea Johnston of Innovation Canada identifies the same risk to our manufacturing sector's productivity and future growth. It's very important to Canada's economic growth, but it's also home to leading edge innovations, addressing key problems like greening the production of goods and uncovering new methods of food production. And so while it's at the core of our economic growth, it is also quite important that we seize the opportunities of digital transformation. And that's a bit of a challenge. A challenge indeed. A 2017 report by BBC shows that Canada has been slow at embracing Industry 4.0 technologies. According to that study, only 3% of manufacturing businesses in Canada have fully implemented Industry 4.0 projects, and another 36% are partway through the process. However, another 42% said that they have done nothing at all. This has major implications for the projected growth of Canada's manufacturing industry and Canada's economy as a whole. Manufacturing has traditionally had a higher multiplier effect on job growth than any other sector. In Canada, one automotive manufacturing job can create an additional 7.6 jobs in installation, parts, service, and maintenance. Job growth, however, is only one of the many benefits manufacturers gain through investments in new technologies. Among the wide range of benefits are lower operating costs, increased product quality, higher innovation capacity, and increased customer satisfaction. But productivity growth is the most valuable for the future of manufacturing in Canada. It allows companies to compete successfully in domestic and foreign markets, which in turn attracts more mandates to Canada, resulting in higher output export, and profitability. Canadian manufacturing productivity is very closely aligned with investments in new technologies. Only about 13% of small businesses report using advanced technologies, compared to 27% of large companies in Canada. So why is it that with the future of manufacturing at stake in Canada, businesses are falling far behind their peers in tech adoption and production growth? One reason, says Irene Sterian, is the significant upfront cost, which is particularly difficult for small and medium-sized manufacturing companies. 
Another issue is the investment. So doing investment in hardware um, is a big leap for SMEs. And the machines are very high priced between half a million to a million dollars in some cases. But these machines last for as long as 20 years. But then the software that the machines actually run with may change every six months. According to a 2018 report by Canadian manufacturers and exporters, 43% of Canadian manufacturers said high operating costs and uncertain ROI is the number one reason keeping them from investing in new technologies. A further challenge is the basic understanding of what these technologies will do, the value of the data they currently have, and the overall return that the investment represents. Yvette Vera Perez, who is the National Team Lead Account Manager for MyTax Canada, says she often hears this when speaking with manufacturers. So we have a, a, lo a number of manufacturing companies that, that we see are trying to advance their systems and bring the uh, digital advantage to the operations. Uh, they, they, they often come to us, to my decks, and they say, well, I need AI, I need machine learning, but I, what I first need to do is really to understand my data, to clean my data, and, and then get to, to, to understand what information that data can provide, and that's the first step. A few actionable solutions like technology assessment programs, demonstration tours, and testing opportunities are a good way to give Canadian manufacturers a stronger understanding of how these technologies can transform their operations. Finally, the third barrier to adoption is a labor and skills shortage. Between 2004 and 2018, Canada lost nearly 550,000 manufacturing jobs, with the biggest loss seen in men under the age of 45 who did not possess post-secondary credentials. According to the Future Skills Centre, it appears that these men found jobs in other industries because of the lack of job opportunities in the sector, leaving today's manufacturing labour force much older than the workers in other Canadian industries. So in terms of gaps, um, this is a sector that's growing very rapidly, right? Uh, so many key manufacturing roles are staffed by older workers who will be leaving the workforce in the next decade, you say. Um, so, so, so replacing them is a, is a very important human resources problem or dilemma that manufacturers face across the country. We know that about 25% of the manufacturing workforce will retire by 2030, and that the youngest cohorts, those around in the 25 years old age category, account for about 5% of the workforce. So in order just to maintain production levels, and let alone grow, will require both a higher degree of automation, as well as attracting more workers, including still skilled trades. Furthermore, new skill requirements mean that workers in manufacturing now need different qualifications than they have traditionally needed. These skills include digital skills, data analytics, machine learning, data visualization, 3D printing, nanotechnologies, and more. These skills will depend on the specific manufacturing operation, and while sectoral employment has not changed significantly since 2009, some areas of manufacturing, like support for mining or oil and gas, are experiencing some job growth. Companies that are creating new net jobs are those which, on average, have higher skills requirements. For Hamid Ali Mohammed, CEO of Ontario-based Internet of Things company AOMS Technologies, the key to the future of manufacturing is to invest in education. We as a country, we have a great potential to become a globally competitive, data-driven digital economy. And uh, I mean, I always say this, invest in people. Like great ideas, great companies, great businesses come from, from smart people. So we need to really invest uh, more in training our local talents to become world-recognized digital transformation leaders, at the same time attract international experts. We are such a diverse, uh, uh, we have a, such a diverse uh, demography in Canada, and that will actually help us to attract uh, even international talent in, in, into the country. Investing in talent and education and training programs for reskilling and upskilling will be critical to the future success of Canada's manufacturing industry. One potential avenue to overcoming the manufacturing sector's labor shortage is women and international talent. The government reports recently mentioned that there is going to be a gap of 60,000 advanced manufacturing jobs in Canada over the next 10 years, and they're targeting 24,000 of them towards women. So it's really like how to attract women to those jobs and how to market uh, the new jobs in manufacturing towards them. 
diversity will create a stronger workforce. So having um, more of everything in the manufacturing workforce would be great. And I would say younger employees right now, including men under 40, have a higher expectation of gender diversity at all level within the company and involving um, men as well as women in creating that diversity and a diverse workforce will attract more, more talent and we won't have that 60,000 job gap. And while Canada has one of the highest post-secondary education rates in the world, we cannot become complacent, says Victor Yang, Chief Scientific Officer at 70 Surgical. He also made the argument for long-term investments into manufacturing SMEs to try to break down the barriers for tech adoption. They are also necessary, he argues, for increasing exports upon which Canada depends. Digitization and the tech adoption really helps us to maximize uh, productivity and also increases our probability for export. Let's face it, face it, that the Canadian economy needs to export. We just don't have the population base to, to, to digest all the productivity that we can have in this country. And we're in an increasingly connected global economy. So digitization and the tech adoption with exportation will really break down the barriers for market entry. I mean, Canadian SMEs uh, really represent the vast majority of our exportation. And that's why, as I was saying, that official support in these directions can help our economy. SMEs make up 93% of Canadian manufacturing companies and are described by Irene Sterian as the engine of transformation for Canada's manufacturing sector. Leveling the playing field between small and medium-sized businesses and large multinationals is the key to ensuring Canada is successful in the future of high-tech advanced manufacturing. Canada has a strong academic, startup, and entrepreneurial ecosystem, and they have great research ideas, but we need to translate them into economic benefit. And SMEs are the engine of that digital transformation. We need to educate SMEs and the government to give them the same benefits as multinational companies, as well as the resources and talent, so they can take greater risk understand technology and business opportunities, pivot to new sectors, export to new markets, create local resilient supply chains, and innovate without fear of failure. Canada's manufacturing industry is going through a revolution and it has huge potential for Canada's economic future. Investments must be made to de-risk next generation technologies, support manufacturing SMEs, and to attract and train a skilled and future-proof workforce. Industry 4.0 is upon us, and if Canada wants to maintain an innovative and resilient manufacturing sector, action needs to be taken now.